this video is just going to be a short practice of arrays so I'll start by putting making a few variables I'll say variable a is equal to whatever some kind of word hello let's say variable a1 is equal to goodbye and we'll say that variable a3 is equal to a string of some kind okay simple enough right now i am going to make a oops that should be a2 not a1 ignore that now i'm just going to make a quick array out of that and i'm going to use the actual variable val the variables instead of the values uh, that the variables are associated with and i'll print that out just so you can see that that's worked and let's go print that out and we've got hello goodbye a string of some kind right now i'm going to prove very quickly that you can assign you know just the values themselves in fact i'll, I'll use uh, int values so we'll say 99 102 1 okay easy enough we'll print b2 to show that that's worked and there you go two different kinds there easy enough all right next concept is actually using um yeah the items from there so let's say i want to print out i don't know let's say b20 uh, plus b21 what's this going to do well if we remember correctly all the arrays have an index and they are in index and they all start at zero and they end at however many items you've got minus one so index zero of b2 would obviously be 99 then and index one of b2 would be 102 so here this is going to print out the addition of 99 plus 102 which should be 201 quite simple really okay and let's say i'm bored of a value and i'd like to change it well all i've got to do is just get the value within the array like that and assign a new value to it so i'm going to say that I don't want 102 now, I actually want 55, and I'll print out B2 once again. I'm just going to separate these by a little space, so we've got the differential there. Easy enough, there you go. Now then, next thing I want to do is show you how to do a little for loop for these kind of things, right? So I'll put a little for loop, uh, I'm going to say for count, or for iteration in zero dot dot how long is this well this is this has got three items in it and it's free long so i want to iterate over b2 so the last index is two so the up bound will have to be two as well the lower band is zero to reflect the actual index and i want to print um b2 iteration okay easy enough easy enough we'll run that and we'll have a look and see if it prints everything out it should print out 99 55 and also one why 55 because we assigned 55 to index one here okay easy enough next thing i want to do is i just want to print every single item uh, in b2 for example right so i'll say for item b2 print item and here i'm not actually getting the range number i'm not associating this variable in the for the first variable in the for loop uh, with the range number i'm actually use, using getting that that the value of item is actually the value of the first item in b2 and then the second item so the item for the loop is the value of the variable item right so here i can print item instead of having to use the number of the range uh, to get the item from the array so i can directly get the item value however i do not get a count value so there are some negatives to using this type of for loop right there are a few other things i can do obviously if i don't want to use this item method and i've got a big array let's say it's an array in fact you know what i'll make one we'll say variable c equals an array um 22 55 66 77 88 99 um, 101 right no idea how many items that was didn't count so 
the way I can find out how many items I've got in it is I can do print C dot count. So I get the count of the amount of items in it. And I'm going to have a quick look at that now. And we've got seven items in. So what is going to be the index number of the last item? Well, it's going to be equal to the amount of items within the array minus one. So it should be equal to six, all being well. So if I wanted to do this type of for loop, I now know that there's seven items in there and that the last index number should be six. So I can just say for iteration in zero dot 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 six, because six is the last index number. I can just print out C iteration like that and get everything that way. Okay, so it should be 22, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99, 101. Easy, easy peasy. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Right then, let's say I don't want to, you know, predetermine the items that are going to be inside of my array. All I want to do is just make an empty array. Well, I can make an empty array, that's fine. However, when I make one, I have to give it a, like, data type that, that's going to be inside of it. So in this one, mm, I guess I guess what we'll have inside of it will be int. All right, well, I want int. And then after putting those square brackets there, I just put curly brackets afterwards. If I print this out, you shall see that it is indeed just an empty array. There's nothing in it. You just see two square brackets, right? And the only item values we can put in there are ints. So how do we add things? Well, there's two ways to add things. I can use uh, array.append and then put a value inside of these curly brackets after the value append, so 99. Or I can use d plus equals and then a value. So I'll put 77. Then we'll print out d and you'll see that both of those values have been added here. Okay. Oops, what happened there? Deep. Ah, yes. I keep doing this. I have to put them in square brackets. So let's do that again. We'll say that D plus equals square brackets 77, because I need to practice, plus equals square brackets 109, D plus equals square brackets 22. Right? Now let's print that out. We should have 99, 77, 109, and 22. And not an error because I'm so incompetent sometimes. All right, let's have a look. So if we go down, we've got 99, 77, 109, and 22. As predicted by myself. Right? Next thing I want to do is remove items. So I want to remove, I want to remove um, 109. Okay. So inside of these curly brackets, which is the remove argument, I use the word at followed by a colon. And then I the index number of the value I want to remove. So indexes start at zero. So 99 here would be zero. 77 would be index one. 109 would be index two. So I want to remove 109 and its value is index two. So I just put two here as the argument. And I'm going to print D so everyone can see that. And what we should get as the list after that is 99, 77, and 22. Let's have a look if that works. And it has worked. That's all I'm going to actually do for um, this practice because, you know, the lesson before was quite intensive. Just want to recap. And yeah, hope you enjoyed.